If I have to choose, I'll always do the unhealthy but fun thing. Drink or stay sober? Well, drink. Smoke or don't take a smoke break? Smoke break. Work on a video or hang out with friends in a karaoke bar? I simply hate doing stuff that's not fun, so I don't do it. It's annoying though, because I sometimes feel like I have no say in that decision. And if I'm being honest, I wish I was better at doing things I hate. Imagine I could make better choices. I bet I'd be healthier, thinner, I bet I would look so much better, and I bet I would also have more money. I think I'd be quite limitless. And I want to be limitless. Wonder Woman. Just with better acting skills. So fuck it, I'm gonna get better at doing things I hate. It might be key to understand why I always choose to do the wrong thing. I mean, I could just easily do the right thing even though I hate it, right? Turns out, it's not that easy. Doing things that are fun, even if they're unhealthy, or maybe especially if they're unhealthy, produces dopamine. If something is not fun for you, it doesn't produce dopamine. The hormone that tells you shit is really good. So good, you actually start craving more of that good shit. The more dopamine producing things you do, the more dopamine you're gonna start craving. Heroin, for example, is quite a dopamine kicker. So are cigarettes and so is alcohol. And to continue feeling the dopamine kick, you're gonna start needing more. More cigarettes, more alcohol, more heroin. And for heroin, I've been told it's quite expensive. Anyways, that's how you develop an addiction. That's, by the way, valid for everybody. But it wouldn't be fun without some ADHD level up in difficulty. Because there's a fun little gene deficiency in the DRD2 gene that makes it difficult for neurons to respond to dopamine. And sometimes when dopamine is low, our neurons start firing for all the wrong reasons. It's the trumpet player blowing his horn during the piano solo. Annoying and distracting. Since we have a difficulty when it comes to managing our dopamine, we're kind of hardwired to crave more dopamine than the general public. Which is kind of bad because we've just established the connection between dopamine chasing and addiction. Can it be said that I have developed a dopamine addiction by doing only things that I consider to be fun? Yeah, quite so. The solution is simple then. In her book Dopamine Nation, Dr. Anna Lemke talks about the connection between pain and pleasure. The body always tries to keep a balance between pain and pleasure. Hitting too hard on the dopamine side means that the scales are imbalanced. So we need to reset the scale. So we're going cold turkey. Full dopamine detox. What's a dopamine detox? Essentially, staying away from everything that produces dopamine. That's what I'm doing. My goal, being bored shitless. This means no social media, no phone, no coffee, <laughs> no meeting friends, just sitting in silence and being with my thoughts. And since you're not detoxing, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. And now, shh, I gotta detox. And I can feel it's already working, because that scale is tipping towards painful. Oh, so much pain. For everybody surrounding me, I got irritated, annoyed, petty, frustrated for having to block of all these different sources of dopamine, like food, TV shows that are fun, and my phone. And sitting in silence doesn't really cut it if you've never wanted to be a nun. I'm sure my dopamine scale is utterly fucked up right now. I'm devoid of any joy. I'm worse than ever, and the worst part about that is my mind is chasing thought after thought after thought. It's impossible to keep this thing up. And also the question is what happens as soon as I restart using my phone as I meet up with people again? I don't know, but this seems unsustainable. Dopamine hits extreme when it comes from external sources, which to a degree are part of everyday life and cannot be ignored completely. Going cold turkey might be great for some, especially when the goal is to get the toxins out of your body and never reuse them again. But if my goal is to learn and control my dopamine addiction, then avoiding all sources of dopamine is not gonna help me manage that. And I cannot simply avoid all sources of dopamine for the rest of my life. Well, actually I could, but then that life would become very short because I'd probably kill myself. And even when we're talking about severe addiction, there's people who go all in and all out immediately. And then there's people who scale down. Methadone programs, nicotine strips, and the all or nothing approach does not seem to work for me. If we look back at the pain and joy balance scale, the scale was tipped to pain. It was not in equilibrium. So maybe I can take a more moderate approach. 
See, I was thinking of taking up a new project, like remodeling the kitchen. New projects are fun in the beginning, so they give us a hit of dopamine. Since it would be a big project and a big change, it'll give me a big hit. It'll also especially hit my bank account. So instead of remodeling the kitchen, I'm gonna just go get a small dopamine kick by getting a coffee at the coffee shop around the corner. Instead of extremely tipping the scale towards pleasure, I'm just gonna tip it a little bit. And it'll take a lot of coffee to even out the expenses I would have made with interior designing. Instead of going cold turkey, I'm trying to expose myself to more painful situations. I have recently started ending all my showers with ice cold water. And it sucks. But I'm training myself towards doing something I know is painful and which I hate, but at an achievable level. And I have noticed that I am more willing to expose myself to other situations that I previously found painful. And I notice that my pain becomes manageable. And with that, I'm closer to making a decision to do the thing that I should be doing, even though I don't want to be doing that. Because I'm slowly training my brain to do that which is necessary, even though it sucks. Following a shadow down to the graveyard, say a prayer.